Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how to combine multiple Jupyter Notebook files into a single Jupyter Notebook. Um, so when I say Jupyter Notebook, I'm referring to these IPython notebooks, such as this one. So the file extension is .ipynb. Uh, so essentially I'll be combining these seven IPYNB files into a single file. Um, and ultimately I'll be doing this using a function that I wrote in Python 3 but I'm just going to walk through a couple brief notes about uh, Jupyter Notebooks in general before we get to that. Okay, so let's take a look at how Jupyter Notebooks are set up. They're very convenient for a number of reasons. Uh, for example, you can compartmentalize your code into different sections and it makes your code look very nice and readable. Um, things like that. So if we look at just this short example of a, yeah, it's a short notebook file, only a few cells. This is a plain text type cell, so it doesn't get run by Python. It's just kind of our English commentary about the code and whatnot. And these two cells down here are code cells, so they do get run by Python. Um, and though Python, or sorry, IPython notebooks are very convenient for a number of reasons. As far as I know, there's no simple way to sort of control all, control A, sorry, control A, and select all the cells if I wanted to copy and paste all the cells from one notebook into another, which we do want to do in this case. So just to start, I'm going to show you what we would have to do if we were combining Jupyter Notebook 2 and Jupyter Notebook 3. So I could start by making a copy of Notebook 3. And notebook two is even shorter, only two cells, one markdown and one uh, code cell. So we could start by just adding the cells that we need. Um, we'll move this one down because the two are, at f um, we want two to go first. I have to select the right type of cell because we know that this cell is a markdown cell. So we copy this first. Oops. Paste this, and then of course, copy and paste the code cell. And one thing to keep in mind is these are very short notebook files, right? But you can have notebooks with any number of of um, <clears throat> cells in them. So you can see this could become a long, tedious process and opens you up to human error for getting to copy and paste some things. Another potential issue is if you want this um, output to appear in your new combined file, you will need to rerun the code. And in this case, it's not a huge problem because the code runs in a split second. But a lot of times, as you probably know, when you run code for data analysis, things like that, uh, the code can take hours to run. You may not want to just rerun the code in order to have this output that you already have generated somewhere else um, in order to have that appear in the combined file. So for a number of reasons, this isn't the ideal way of combining the files. Okay, so what we're going to do in this next part is we're going to take a look at a Jupyter Notebook file as a plain text document. Um, and this will be useful in understanding sort of what its elements are, what it looks like, um, and what we need to do in order to combine multiple files into one. Um, you can also, it'll help you to understand the function that I wrote to do this and to modify my function however you might want for your own purposes. So. This is the same file path here that I have opened in my Finder on MacBook uh, that I had opened over here that we were looking at earlier in Jupyter Notebook. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it with Atom. That's just a plain text editor. You can open it with any plain text viewer editor that you may work with. I'll give it a second to open. But what I want you to notice here is that Jupyter Notebook files are actually just in JSON format, JSON. Um, if you're not familiar with this file format, you can read about it. I've provided a link in the description of this video. But really, the only thing you need to know um, for our purposes here is that JSON looks just like a Python dictionary. So it's a set of key value pairs, of course. The keys, and this is the Jupyter Notebook file itself, remember. The keys are cells, um, metadata, MB format, MB format minor. And what's nice is the only thing we really care about for our purposes is um, the information corresponding to cells. 
Because as you might imagine, that contains the information from our specific Jupyter notebooks, the information in our code cells and our markdown cells, the stuff that we want to copy and paste from one Jupyter notebook into another. Um, so these other, um, this other information down here that I had talked about, to be honest, I don't know exactly what these things do, all of them, but it's more things that relate to the Jupyter Notebook formatting overall and the layout. So what we're going to really end up doing is use one, um, one Jupyter Notebook file as our template, sort of. So we'll start with one Jupyter Notebook file and then just copy and paste what the function is going to be doing. is just copy and pasting the cells information from um, all the other Jupyter Notebook files into our template file. So that's what we're going to be doing going forward. Okay, great. So we're actually at the point now where we're going to run our function in Python to um, combine our files for us into a single IPYNB file. So again, just a review of what we're going to be doing is taking these seven files in this order, these IPYNB files, and generating um, a combined or a merged Jupyter notebook that will be named um, combined.ipynb. And the code to do this just so happens to be in this file here. 3.ipynb. Um, that's just because this was originally part of a homework assignment um, that I had for a class and um, it was in problem 3. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that I have edited this notebook, um, that is notebook 3.ipynb, a little bit since the beginning of this YouTube tutorial, so I um, just wanted to mention that so no one gets confused, um, but don't worry about that. Um, so this is just some background information which we've mostly gone over. And here I just wanted to point out um, that you can actually look at the contents of an IPYNB file right here within Jupyter Notebook. So just like we did in Atom uh, just a second ago, we looked at file number 2.ipynb um, as a plain text file. You can do that as well right here in Jupyter Notebook. So I've loaded it here into a variable called A, and you see it loads as a dictionary, and the keys are cells, metadata, NB format, NB format minor. If you want to look at the actual text of the Jupyter Notebook file itself, the IPYNB file itself, you can do so. So this is the same information that we saw um, in the plain text viewer earlier. Um, and this can be useful to mess around with um, when you're trying to understand exactly what you need to do in order to combine your Jupyter Notebooks in the way that you want to, um, using code that is. Okay, so down here I've just generated my ordered list of uh, notebooks that I want to be merged into one. Okay, and in this final cell we have the actual function that will combine our Jupyter Notebooks into one file for us. So remember we said earlier that what we're going to do is load in one file, one Jupyter Notebook as our template. Um, so that will contain everything, the cells, metadata, NB format, NB format minor. And then for the rest of them, the only things that we need to worry about, the other Jupyter Notebooks, we just add the information from cells um, onto our template file. So that's exactly what we do in this function. We load in um, the first file, which in our case is 1.ipynb, has all the metadata and everything. And then for the remaining files, 2 through 7, we load each of the files with the loop. We're loading each of the files into a variable called b. And then we are adding that... Um, the cells information onto A. And after doing that for each of the files, we dump our variable A into a new um, new file called combined.ipynb. Okay, so finally I'm going to uncomment this and actually run the function so that it will generate our new file called combined.ipynb. So I'm running it now. It tells me it generated the file. So let's go ahead and look over here and see if the file was in fact generated. Yep, there's combined.ipynb, and if we look at it, let's see, fingers crossed that it looks right. Yep, we've got, uh, first we have 1.ipynb, these are the contents, 2.ipynb, you'll see that it actually does have our output, um, which is what we didn't have if we copied and pasted, remember, and then there's 4, 5, 6, so this looks perfect. Um, it's concatenated them in the way that we wanted to. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments.